الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعين به ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تبارك وتعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى أحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد We continue inshallah ta'ala This is lecture number 40 in our tafsir program and we we were given some examples of the tafsir of the Qur'an by the Qur'an and this particular ayah I mentioned last week الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِيمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمٍ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ الْأَمْنُ وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ The ones that truly believe and they don't mix their faith with any ظلم oppression that's the word in Arabic ظلم is oppression those are those will have safety and those will be will be the or those are the guided ones and the Sahaba heard this one as I told you last week and they came and they, this was very difficult for them as they thought Allah is talking about actual oppression in general. They said, Ya Rasulullah, Messenger of Allah, who from amongst us does not oppress themselves? The Prophet said, this is not how you understand it. This is not the way Allah Ta'ala means it. Allah, what Allah means is actually a shift uh, subhanAllah, ascribing partners with Allah Ta'ala in worship. He said, just look at Surah Luqman, ayah number 13. Allah says, as on, on the, the, Allah related the statement of Luqman to his son, Ya Bunayn Ya Laqam Shirk Billah, Inna Shirka La Zulmun Azim. My son do not ascribe partners with Allah, who verily a shirk is a tremendous oppression subhanallah our second example <coughs> today's example is the ayah that i recited in the first raqah allah said in surah al-ma'idah surah al-an'am brother wa'indahu mafatih al-ghayb la ya'lamuha illa hu wa'indahu mafatih al-ghayb la ya'lamuha illa hu and this is an answer to those that go to fortune tellers, soothsayers, al-Araf, al-Arafin, al-Kahana. And they say, oh, the people that can read the palm, read, they can tell you your future. Uh, the ones that think that jinn know the future, uh, and so on and so forth. SubhanAllah. Uh, or the ones that think that the prophets know the future and know the unseen. There are literally uh, groups from this ummah, unfortunately, call themselves Muslims. They say that the Prophet them is Havir, Navir. He's present, he is looking, he knows everything, he knows uh, he's present now, the Prophet, and he knows the unseen. Well, the Prophet himself denied that when he says, I don't know the unseen except for that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught me. SubhanAllah. 
So, or the incident with Sulaiman alayhi salam, as you know, Allah Ta'ala uh, put the jinn under the, the command of Sulaiman alayhi salam. Anyone that does not obey his order, Allah has given him the password, so to speak, a phrase. He will say it that burn that that, will, that jinn will burn, perish, completely on the spot. They were petrified of him. They know they disobeyed order, they're done. So they used to build for him and make things for him. Allah Taala said that they used to, they're the ones that did the, all the difficult construction. Huh? Allah said, فَسَخَّرْنَ لَهُ الْرِيحَ تَجْرِي بِأَمْرِهِ رُخَاءً حَيْتُ أَصَابُ When you make that dua, oh my Lord, give me a kingdom that does not, does not be fitting for anyone besides me. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, uh, he fulfilled that supplication. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put under his command every type of jinn, the ones that do things for him. They build things, they uh, they dive, as Allah said, Kulla Badnani wa Ghawas. Allah Ta'ala put the wind under his command. Uh, if he wants to travel, him and his army get on a big platform. The air, the wind comes and lifts it, and they fly wherever he wants to go. Uh, with speed. And, uh, and then every type of jinn with all the skills that they have people that do construction uh, and people and uh, not people jinn and jinn that dive in the bottom of the sea they used to dive because in his kingdom at the entrance of his kingdom he had all kinds of aquariums with every uh, species of fish that you can think of. And the jinn they used to go and get them and to put them in those aquariums. They used to die for treasures, for emeralds and things like that. SubhanAllah, I mean, Allah Ta'ala gave them absolute uh, uh, power over them. I haven't seen any uh, indication of that. But it's possible. Yeah, I mean, they certainly had uh, the skill. Yeah, Allah Taala knows. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's very possible. But Subhanallah, uh, the incident that I'm the, that I'm referring to is when he died. I said, so he was uh, customary for him to stand and uh, watch them, supervise the work. And he had a staff, Mansa'ah. Uh, and then he, alayhi salam, was watch them, make sure that every, all the work is done because he was able to see them. Now, subhanAllah, they start, they working, they working, they working. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, caused him to die. It was time for him, he died. But he was still leaning on his staff with his eyes open, looking at them, but he was dead. So subhanAllah, they kept working, 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 day and night, for a few days, he was there. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent one of those termites, started eating away his staff, and then when the staff broke, he fell, then they realized that he was dead. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about it in Surah 7. فَلَمَّا قَضَيْنَا عَلَيْهِ الْمَوْتَ Allah Ta'ala you know, started talking uh, about it and He gave us a lot of information. يعني, uh, وَلِي سُلَيْمَنَ الْذِيحَ غُدُوهَا شَهْرَ وَرَوَاحُهَا شَهْرَ The ذِيحَ, the wind, غُدُوهَا شَهْرَ وَرَوَاحُهَا شَهْرَ The غُدُو is when you, do, you go in the morning. رَوَاحُ is when you come back in the evening. The, it will go 
the distance that it would take them normally a month to cross in one morning, half a day. And then we'll come back the same distance of a month usually in one day. So the, the distance that would normally take two months, huh, they cross it in one day. They go and they come back. So how? Just like the airplanes today. Uh, okay, same kind of of uh, of concept. Subhanallah. Uh, Subhanallah. The Allah Subhanahu wa Taala made uh, uh, gave him a uh, like a source. Al uh, Ain is a source, a stream of bronze. Uh, imagine you get a. Ain, a, a stream of liquid bronze. Allah opens it up for you somewhere. That's what Allah did for, for him. So basically all they had to do is get that bronze and use to to mold it into things that they they want. And from the jinn, the ones that work, uh, in front of him, they work for him with the with the permission of his Lord. SubhanAllah. وَمَنْ يَزِرْ مِنْهُمْ عَنْ أَمْرِنَا نُذِقْهُ مِنْ عَذَابِ السَّعِيرِ And whoever disobeys our order, uh, by disobeying the order of Sulaiman, he will get a severe, uh, from a severe punishment. يَعْمَلُونَ لَهُ مَا يَشَاءُ مِنْ مَحَارِيبَ وَتَمَاثِيلَ وَجِفَانِكَ SubhanAllah. They make for him, Mahari, uh, Al Mihrab is a place of prayer. Yeah, they build, they build uh, intricate, well decorated, beautiful looking places of worship. Tamathi, <coughs> Tamathi is idols. Huh? We want to say, well, subhanAllah, this is shit. But in the certain Tamathi uh, of some sort, in their time, in the Sharia, was not, was not how. The Tamathil al Haram in our Sharia, but in the Sharia of Sulaiman was not was not the case. SubhanAllah, because I mean there are always people ready to pounce on such an information. Ah, but hey, this is haram. And subhanAllah. The did I the liquid that I said it's not the bronze, it's actually the uh, ketan is the copper. Allah gave him liquid copper uh, for him, subhanAllah. So the jinn would work for him uh, and they would make these things, the, the mahari, the, the different uh, elevated chambers of worship, the statues, the al-jifan, uh, al-jawab, uh, subhanAllah, yeah, it's amazing. These are like pots for cooking, but they're like as big as a room. Because they need to cook in mass for the, his massive army. They make food for a massive army, subhanAllah. قدور راسية يعني قدور قدر قدر الأكل راس يعني ما بيتحركش في مكانه مكان النار تحته حاجة كبيرة جدا يعني أو something huge where they used to cook for 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 a lot of people يعملوا على داود شكرا work of family of داود in gratitude وقليل من عبادي الشكور and a few of my servants are thankful are grateful, subhanAllah. And always, this, you, know, you find this all over the Quran. The good ones are always a few. The good ones are always a few. قال الله عز وجل فلما قبلنا عليه الموت ما دلهم على موته إلا دابة الأرض تأكل من سأته When we have decreed on Suleiman death, nothing indicated to the jinn his death except the creature of the earth eating his staff. Subhanallah. Uh, 
تبين الجن أن لو كانوا يعلمون الغيب ما لبثوا في العذاب المهين. When he fell, finally, it became clear to the jinn that if they know anything of the unseen, they would not have remained in the humiliating punishment. But they, when they were working, he was working them so hard, and because he was still looking at them while he was dead, they didn't know. They kept working and working, but it was yeah, yeah, it was not stop. Subhanallah, until Allah Ta'ala decreed that he fell. And this this a this is one of those proofs uh, against the fact that the jinn don't know the unseen. Now, because subhanallah, this subject came up with somebody today here in the Masjid Dhuhr or Asr. So let me elaborate on it a little bit. Someone can say, well, what about Nostradamus, for example? Nostradamus was able to accurately foretell a lot of things. Huh? He even taught, spoke about Hitler, for example. He misspelled, he missed one letter, he said Hitler. But he talked about some of the things that he did. Huh? There is this guy that foretold almost every, not every, accurately every president uh, in this country, and it's, the, it's the last 30 years, whatever. There are things like that. I, I maintain the only one that knows the unseen. By the Quran and the Sunnah is Allah. But the decrees of Allah are sent every year, especially on the night of power, to the lower heavens. Huh? Where which the what happens? The jinn, they're able to fly up there and they steal information. And they only steal that which Allah allows them to steal. That's why the in Surah Al Jinn, they said that we we notice that the the heavens have is filled with haras, huh? They like almost like the, the heaven security guards, angels that were not there, posted everywhere. That's when the revelation was being sent, when Allah was sent in, sending the Quran to the Prophet to prevent the jinn from stealing it, because that would be a big fitna, huh? Uh, Al-Shihad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent uh, something that burns the jinn to prevent them from uh, stealing or delivering any information. But now the revelation is complete, so they can sometimes go and steal some information and that, that's what the, those, the soothsayers use, because they use a jinn, use a shayab, they can say, oh, oh, I know the unseen, uh, give me the, your name, the name of your mother, you know, if you're a father, it's some of the, the oldest tricks in the book, knowing that you have a tari from the jinn that's with you all the time, that knows every information about you. They get some names from you, and they find out who's the tari of the other person. The two qurala, they fly very quickly, even if that person is in Indonesia, Australia, Egypt, whatever. It's a short trip for them. Two seconds, they're there. They get the information, come back, we're giving it to the sorcerer, and he's, he tells you, he bewilders you. He tells you, oh yeah, this, this and that. You're like, wow, this guy is amazing. Uh, there's nothing amazing about him. He sold his soul to the shayateen. And in, in return, they give him information. They go get information quickly and they bring it to him. So there's not really, not, not much to it. SubhanAllah, besides the tricks of the shayateen. Now, going back to the ayah. وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغِيمِ and he has the keys of the unseen, subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ya'lamuha illahu. He's the only one that knows it. And when, when Allah says that, that puts a stop to any other speculation. Huh? The only one that knows the unseen is Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm stressing on this here, ikhwah, because this phenomenon of sihr, of going to soothsayers, to go into sorcerers, is, has become... Yeah, I mean, I'm not even going to say rampant, it has become the norm for the majority of people. So much so that you are, now you're afraid, uh, especially in, in, in Muslim countries, when someone invites you, you are, you are afraid to eat. Am I right? Because they, uh, they have probably prepared something for you. You want to eat it? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Huh? SubhanAllah, and people have no fear of Allah. They said, 
Some, some of them are even mixing religion with this stuff. And they can't tell the difference anymore. May Allah protect us. Now Allah goes into the details. And this is a general statement. He knows what's in the land and what's in the sea. Can anyone on the face of the earth the one that has access to the, the most sophisticated satellites and all the, the, the resources. Can he claim, to, to, to claim that he knows what's in the land and what's in the sea? Because here it means every single thing that's in the land, every single thing that is on land, on the face of the earth, Allah knows it. And every single thing in the depths of the seas and the oceans. Nobody can claim. And this is real knowledge. SubhanAllah. Every single fish, every single species. Huh? Not only that, where they go, what they do, what they eat. Every single detail. SubhanAllah. Surrounding everything that's on land and on and in the sea. Then he goes on. And I remember I gave you this example many times. An example of the Amazon jungle, right? Well, it's right here. وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا There is not a leaf that falls except that he knows it. Accounted for. Written. Huh? SubhanAllah. أَكْثَرْ مِنْ كِنَا لَمِسْمَ السِّنِّ وَرَقِ الشَّغْرَ الْحَبِّ وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ وَلَا عَطْبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابِ الْمُبِينِ SubhanAllah And there's no, not a grain A grain huh? That's within the darkness of the earth Or no most moist or dry thing Except that he has written it in a clear record Ya Allah Not only he knows it It has been written to the last detail huh? Before he created the heavens and the earth ثم قال سبحانه وتعالى وهو الذي يتوفاكم بالليل ويعلم ما جرحتم بالنهار and he's the one that takes your soul by night your soul leaves your body where does it go? Allah Ta'ala knows and he, have, he knows what you have committed by day and subhanAllah he takes your soul at night during the day every single thing that you did that you've committed he knows about it subhanAllah that's why if you remember when I was talking about the story of the people of the cave in Khutb of Jum'ah uh, Death and sleep are cousins uh, They're partners as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said They're brothers and no one could Sleep is the brother of death The same phenomenon Except for one is temporary And the other is permanent That's the only difference And SubhanAllah shows you how fragile we are And Yani the fact that we have no control whatsoever at any time Allah Ta'ala takes the soul out of the body at night decides not to bring it back not to send it back that's it your time is up <coughs> SubhanAllah and then he knows what you have done during the day ثُمَّ يَبْعَثُكُمْ فِيهِ لِيُقْضَى عَجَلٌ مُسَلْمًا then he revives you therein that a specified term may be fulfilled. He has a term that was written for you 50,000 years before he created the heavens and the earth. He revives you so that you reach that, that term. When their term comes, huh, they, don't, they cannot advance it, huh, not even one hour, not even one minute, or delay it. That's it. Subhanallah. This is ikhwah. This, in, this improves the quality of Iman. If you know that you, your appointed term, Allah Ta'ala appointed it 50,000 years before He created the, the heavens and the earth. Then Subhanallah, a believer should not be afraid of death, should not be afraid of anything. Huh? That's why the Sahaba. They used to go to the battlefield and the arrows are being thrown at them. <laughs> they know. 
If it's my time, it's going to happen now. If it's not my time, I'm going to keep going. That's it. It doesn't bother them, subhanAllah. And this is important for the state of mind of the believer. Not to be afraid of anything, not to fear anything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثم إليه مرجعكم ثم ينبئكم بما كنتم تعملون. Then to him you will return and then he will inform you about that which you used to do. وهو القاهر فوق عباده. And he's the one that is the subjugator over all of his servants. ويصل عليكم حفظة. And he sends to you guardian angels. There you go. حفظة. له معقبات من بين يديه ومن خلفه يحفظونه من أمر الله. He has معقبات guardians. That's why Allah Taala says in Surah Fussilat, "إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا." Those that said, "Our Lord is Allah," they are they were on the straight path. تتنزل عليهم الملائكة. The angels descend upon them when when they're dying. ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا. Don't be afraid. Don't be, don't, don't be sad. نحن أولياؤكم. We are your allies in this life and in the hereafter. نحن أولياؤكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة. We are your allies in the life of this world and in the hereafter. Those are the same ones Allah Taala sends to protect you. Huh? Subhanallah. Yeah. In the whole time, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has Guardians over you, uh, the the believing servants of Allah. حتى إذا جاء أحدكم الموت توفته رسولنا وهم لا يفرطون. Until when death comes to one of you, our messengers take him and they do not fail in their duties. ثم ردوا إلى الله مولاهم الحق ألا له الحكم. وهو أسرع الحاسبين. That they, that the servants are returned to Allah, their true Lord, without a doubt, unquestionably. He is the, he, uh, Subhanallah, uh, he has the judgment, and he is the swiftest of accountants. And holding person accountable, he Subhanahu wa Taala does it so swiftly and quickly. أسرع. Al-Hasibin, Subhanahu wa Taala. So this first part of the ayah that I, that I spoke about that talks about the unseen has an equivalent in a hadith and an ayah. Hadith of Ibn Umar radiyallahu anhu ma. قال صلى الله عليه وسلم مفاتيح الغيب خمس لا يعلمها إلا الله. The keys. Of the unseen are five. The only one that knows them is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The keys of the unseen are five. The only one that knows them is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Then He, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, recited, "Inna Allah indahu ilm al-saa' wa yunzil al-ghayf wa yaglam ma fi al-arham wa ma tadri nafsun." ماذا تكسب غدا وما ما تدري نفس بأي أرض تموت إن الله عليم خبير. الله says indeed Allah alone has knowledge of the hour. so we said the the keys of the unseen are what five. let's count them. Allah alone is that is the one that knows the when the when the hour will take place. does anyone else know? we know that for a fact. Even the best man that ever walked the earth, and the best angel of all the angels, they don't know. We know that from the hadith of Umar and Jibreel, where Jibreel came, walk, walked into uh, the masjid, the Sahara, same with the Prophet and he looked, he had the, took the likeness of uh, a traveler, someone that they don't know, and he asked him about Islam, you know the hadith, he asked him about Iman, about Ihsan, he asked him about this Asa'ah. The, when is the hour? He said, well, the one being asked does not know more than the one asking the question. That means neither the Prophet Sallallahu knows nor Jibreel Alayhi know, knows what, what, when the hour will take place. So the first one is, he knows, uh, he has the knowledge of the hour. 
And he sets down the rain. Now, someone can say, well, these people now, they have the, uh, the Doppler 5,000 and the Doppler 10,000, and that predicts the weather and this, and then we know uh, it's one foot of rain here and then three inches there. And yeah, but <laughs> who makes that happen? And who decrees where every drop of rain falls? And who has accounted for every drop of the rain? Is it the Doppler 5000? I don't think so. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He has put an angel in charge of the rain. Who's the angel in charge of the rain? Who can tell? Hmm? Mika'il. Ahsantuma. Mika'il. Subhanallah. That's why Jibreel and Mika'il are the top of all angels. Angels. Do you know why? Because they're both responsible for life. They're responsible for life. How? Life is of two types, right? The life of the body and the life of the soul. So Jibreel is responsible for the life of the soul. The revelation. The revelation of Allah is the life of the soul. Am I right? And Mikail is responsible for the life of the bodies. Allah said we made from water everything alive. Allah brought to life everything from the water. And without the water, everything perishes. So Jibreel are responsible for the life of the souls. And Mikail is responsible for the rain, which is the life of the bodies. So, he sends down the rain. Reminds me of an incident, the Prophet also related. This man is walking in the desert. Then he sees a cloud on top of his head, moving quickly. Then he hears in it, Isqi Hadiqata Fulan. Water, the garden of so and so. He's looking around and he's pretty sure that the voice came from the cloud. Not the eye cloud. <laughs> no, the real cloud. So he followed the cloud. Follow, follow. Then he finds this guy's farm in the middle of nowhere. Middle of desert. This guy has a farm with trees. And what's going on here? And this guy digging away, working. He's like, excuse me, Salam alaikum. Are you so and so? He's like, yeah. Who are you? He's like, well, I'm, I'm just confused because I just heard your name being, being said in the cloud. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, see this cloud here? And then, and then he, when he followed it, I forgot to say, he followed it, it stopped right on top of that guy's farm and started raining there. He's like, he's watching from a distance, then he goes and says, yeah, you saw it? So he's like, yeah. Well, I was, as I was coming from a distance, I heard in the cloud as a voice saying, water, the, the, the garden of so-and-so. He's like, so, please, what's your secret? What do you do? So, well, he said, well, he said, I just fear Allah in my, in my, uh, in my garden. Every crop that I get, I get one, I give one third to charity. One third, I feed myself and my family. And the other third, I put back into the land. So this fairness, I fear Allah in this land. Allah Ta'ala keeps sending water. So who decrees? Who decrees? Who gets what? Huh? Who gets the water? It is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So this is the second one. Huh? Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala alone has the knowledge of the hour. He sends down the rain, and He, huh? and He knows what's in the wombs. Now this one could be a subject of debate as well, right? Now believers. They say, well, you know, now we have ultrasounds. Brother, wake up, smell the coffee. How about you click on refresh? Huh? And get the latest update. Where have you been? Get out of under your rock, please. Now we know as well, it's not exclusive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, let me tell you something. 60, 70 years ago before the ultrasound, 
Did your people know anything? Did your ancestors know anything? That's one. Number two. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in the wounds before it gets in the wounds. That's one. And then the ultrasound, at what age usually, and at what stage of the pregnancy they're able to determine male or female? Four or five months. Okay, what about before that? Oops. Okay, well, I need to know because Allah knows. Do you know? You can't tell. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala huh, predicts, not predicts, it, He subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, huh, He knows subhanahu wa ta'ala, predict, forget the word, I said predict, that's not the right word. He knows subhanahu wa ta'ala what's in the wounds before He gets there. As a matter of fact, He's the one that decrees. Uh, at 120 days, He sends a malak. Huh? And he blows his soul in the fetus, then he becomes a human being. And he, he writes what? The hadith of Abu Hurairah. Uh, what does he write? Umrah, Rizqa, Ashaqiyyul Absahi. Of course, the gender, his lifespan, all of his sustenance, to the last detail, every single thing he's going to eat, every single penny that he's, he's going to earn. In his life. Huh? So his lifespan, his sustenance, is he from the ones that will be happy at the end or the ones that will be doomed? Huh? The ones that will be from the people of the Jannah and those and those or the ones from, that will be from the people of Jahannam. May Allah protect you and I. Huh? The yeah, no, because after death, where are they going to go? So, please, I mean, show me which brand of ultrasound can determine this stuff. Huh? Is there one? I don't think so. Allah Ta'ala knows and has told His Messenger about people uh, being coming to, bo to be born way before. And I told you this hadith before, and I'll tell you inshallah again. And does anyone know who Abu Sulaim is? Abu Sulaim? Abu Sulaim was one of the great Sahabiyat. Abu Sulaim, does everyone know who Anas ibn Malik is? Okay, Anas ibn Malik is the one that served the Prophet for 10 years. Umm Sulaim is his mother. And she's the one that brought Anas to serve the Prophet well, Listen to this incident. Hamza, can you make that spin towards me, please? So Umm Sulaim, when the Prophet came to Medina, she accepted Islam, and she brought Anas so that he would serve the Prophet so he was 10 years old. Okay? And she was a beautiful woman, a woman of status. And her husband, the father of Anas, had died. So, Abu Talha al-Ansari, the wealthiest man in all of Medina, wanted to marry him. He can ask for a hand in marriage. She said, a person like you, you are the most eligible bachelor in all of al Medina. A person not like you cannot possibly be refused. But the problem is, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Muslim, and you are a mushrik, you're an idol worshiper, that would not work. You want to marry me? It's very simple. My dowry will be your Islam. You become a Muslim, that's my dowry, I will not ask you for anything else. He said, okay, let me go find out what this is, Islam is about. He went, spoke to the Prophet Sallallahu He likes what he hears. He, he accepted Islam. Then he married her. A few months later, they had a child. 
that Abu Talha loved that child so much. The child was a little bit weak. So he was sick in and out, and one day he was really sick. And Abu Talha would go out and take care of his farms, and he had, he had many of them. And he would come back and ask about the boy. Oh, he's, how's he doing? He's, oh, he's not feeling well. One day, a little bit after Abu Talha left the house for work, the boy died. What does Abu Sulaim, Umm Sulaim do? <coughs> she told everyone in the house, not a word about this. She washed the boy, shrouded him, okay, and got him ready for Janazah the next day. Abu Talha comes home at night. How is the boy? She said he has never been as peaceful as he is today. It's like, well, that's great. She beautified herself, beautified herself, her husband. She made him some good food. He ate. And the hadith said, فَتَعَرَضَتْ لَهَ she, she became int intimate. She's the one that initiated the intimacy with him. When he was over, she said, okay, Abu Talha. She said, our neighbors borrowed this amount of this trust from another neighbor. And now, for some reason, they're reluctant to give the trust back. What should we do? It was like, well, that's absolutely wrong. They should give the trust back. I'm going to go talk to them so that they will give the amana back. She said, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you a trust, an amana, and he has taken it back. Your son has died today. Subhanallah. Well, first of all, let's pause for a second. What kind of caliber human being first and woman is this subhanallah yani, wallahi this, these are women that are worth 10,000 men not a hundred or a thousand but 10,000 this is yani, yeah. women are, when someone dies especially a child who, who becomes a basket case first it's women they're the ones that are not they're inconsolable they're the ones that are, it's very hard to stop them from crying, right? But subhanAllah, this woman was so strong. So much so that even Abu Talha couldn't comprehend it. He, was, he became upset. So now, you telling me this now, after all this? Yani, this, well, this takes place while my son is dead? He goes to the Prophet so said the next day and tells him, this is what happened. So the Prophet said, he made a statement, Barakallahu lakuma fi ghabiri laylatikuma. Shaykh is it? May Allah bless the fruit, and he said it in the male form. The male form, the f may Allah bless the fruit of your mind. I'm sorry, bring me out ultrasound <laughs> that will do this. I mean the next day, in the morning, huh? with Yani subhanallah. And <coughs> sure enough, she gave birth to a son by the name of Abdullah. And Abdullah uh, had seven boys. All of them were reciters and teachers of Quran from the Tabi'i. SubhanAllah, a legacy that came from uh, this beautiful union. So who let the Prophet said know this? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, let's count them again. Allah is the one that knows when the hour takes place. Allah is the one that sends down the rain. We established that. Huh? We removed all the, <coughs> all the, the people's uh, speculation around it. Allah subhanahu is the one that knows what's in the wombs. Huh? And, huh? and no soul shall know or shall perceive what it will earn tomorrow. The this subhanallah. And this is something that all of us have experienced. 
a matter of fact, I experienced it yesterday. I was dropping off, because uh, yesterday was my day off, I was dropping off my wife to visit a sister. I was waiting in the car. It was going to be a five minute thing. All of a sudden, the husband comes out running. Sheikh, what are you doing? Come. And I have the kids in the car. <coughs> They're all dirty because we were uh, to come to a park. <coughs> and all of us ended, ended up entering the brother's home. And I, was, I really resisted. And he insisted like crazy. And all of us ended up drinking juice and drinking tea and eating fruits. All of them was a list from Allah that we had no knowledge of, no idea whatsoever. But Allah has written it for us 50,000 years before He created the heavens and the earth. So, subhanAllah, the rain, uh, the, the hour, the rain, what's in the wounds, the sustenance. And only Allah knows what sustenance is, is coming to you. <coughs> Allah, the Prophet said, Inna ruh al qudusi nafata fi ruhi annahu lan tamut nafsun hatta tastakna rizqaha. The trustworthy spirit. Who is that? Who is the trustworthy spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? Sounds like we, we crossed over to a Christianity. Hmm? He's got the Holy Spirit in him. Yeah. But that's what it is. The Prophet Muhammad mentioned him as the Holy Spirit. Jibreel is said, or a trustworthy spirit. He revealed to me that not a, not a soul shall die before it finishes, it finishes all of its sustenance. All of it. To the last penny, to the last grain, to the last drop of liquid, all of it, subhanAllah. He goes on to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so do not let the fact that you feel that your sustenance is slow in reaching you, don't let that push you towards getting it from harm ways, from ways that are unlawful for you. Because, he said, well, verily, that which Allah has, is only attained with his obedience. That which Allah has cannot possibly be attained with his disobedience. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the last one, and no soul shall know. Well matabri nafsun bi ayi ardin tamut. There's a good chance that you might, might die in this land, right? There's a good chance. <coughs> Look how many people were buried. I buried my own son in the same cemetery that where I buried, we buried a lot of people. Just last year. When I was 10 years old, 15 years old, someone came to me and said, there's a good chance that you bury one, one of your children in, uh, in, in America, in Florida. But I said, are you crazy out of your mind? I'm not going anywhere. Or that I might die and be buried here. Huh? That is the knowledge that is ex it's exclusive to Allah. Subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you know how many people? And I've been in many communities before this one. Do you know how many people were buried that came from overseas just to visit their, their children? Someone's father comes to visit him. He dies and we bury him. Not once I've seen that, I've seen that countless times. Uh, did he, this, this man know that he should be dying and be buried here? Absolutely not. Uh, this knowledge is exclusive to Allah. So what are the five uh, keys of knowledge? Uh, what are them? Well, the the befitting way. <coughs> Allah Ta'ala knows. The hour. When it will take place. Second thing. The rain, the rain. Third thing is what's in the wounds, or what's gonna be in the wounds too, huh? and then the sustenance and the lifespan, when, or, or where a person will die. But Allah has given a window to these things a little bit too. His messengers. I'll give you one incident. 
with the Prophet Before the Battle of Badr, the Sahaba were outnumbered. They were 314, we were taken, and against 1400, 1500 or even more. They had very light weaponry. The others were to the teeth, armed to the teeth, ready to go. <coughs> to give the Sahaba confidence, the Prophet did something amazing. With his staff, Lhasa, the Fatu, he will go to one spot and he will put a, a mark on it, like an X, a mark. And say, he says, this is where uh, Abu Jahl will die, this spot right here. He move on, he said, okay, this spot right here, that's where Umayyad ibn Khalaf will die today. This spot right here, huh? And some of the leaders of Quraysh, he will go and then mark a spot, he said, so and so, give a name, so and so will die right here, and so and so will die right here. And sure enough, with absolute accuracy and precision, the Sahab witnessed it. It's exactly where the Prophet Hassan marked the spot, that's where these people died. Who gave him this knowledge? Allah Ta'ala. Does, does he mean that he knows the unseen? No. But he knows some of it that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala gives him. Ooh. May Allah Ta'ala give us barakah in our time. This, this uh, particular incident or, or ayah is also backed by another hadith and we will close with it inshallah ta'ala. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam khamsun la ya'lamuha illallah. So the Prophet goes up and says, the keys of the unseen are five, only Allah knows them. لا يعلم ما يغيط الأرحام إلا الله. No one knows what is being formed in the womb. No one except Allah. ولا يعلم ما في غد إلا الله. And the only one knows what happen will happen tomorrow except Allah. ولا يعلم متى يأتي المطر أحد إلا الله. And nobody knows with accuracy, with precision, when the rain is going to come except Allah. ولا تدري نفس بأي أرض تموت إلا الله. No one knows when they will die except Allah. ولا يعلم متى تقوم الساعة إلا الله. And no one knows when the hour will come except Allah سبحانه وتعالى. حديث رواه البخاري. May Allah سبحانه وتعالى fix our عقيدة. These are very important عقيدة. Things that we have to have certainty. We have to be completely sure of without the shadow of a doubt. This is a big part of our belief as Muslims. May Allah Ta'ala fix our aqidah. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala make us from the ones that when they hear the speech they follow the best of it. الحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله خير